welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. How great is our God. He is awesome in every way. And way past finding out. I mean, He is so inexhaustible in knowledge. That even when we think we've, we've, uh, we know Him, there's something new about Him every day, every second, every hour. There's something about him that makes our hearts go off. A W E. And the, he he just he's past finding out. That's the only way I can describe him this morning. Is that you know, in all that we face, we are consumed. We can easily be consumed by this world and the things that are in this world. God is an invisible God, and His kingdom, His kingdom, it seems to be invisible, but it is in us. The kingdom of God is alive in us, and, and it's thriving. It's alive, and, and it brings strength, it brings health, it brings wealth, it brings soul prosperity. When we sit down with Him and find out who He is, He's, he's so good, He's so great. <laughs> Again, he's beyond our finding out. Yet we come to him in all loneliness, in all meekness. We humble ourselves before him, waiting to hear by the Spirit of God, knowing that if he doesn't answer us, we won't make it. But thank God for his great love for us, that he will answer us when we call. You know, he sometimes might be a little slow in the answering process. But it's only about your faith, you know. It's about us being still on the Word of God. It's about us trusting that even though we don't see Him, He is here with us. You know, I went through a situation yesterday, and it the, the situation, I'll use the word bleak, <laughs> dark, unable to see, unable to know what was going to happen next, but you knew to be still and trust Him, to talk to Him. You know, you sit there and you just do what you were doing, that good thing, and wait on the Lord and be of good courage because he who has begun the work will finish the work. But he didn't say that there wouldn't be trouble. He didn't say that there, there wouldn't be a part where you couldn't see. Because we're facing two invisible kingdoms. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of heaven. And they're both clashing against each other. Not that, not that the battle has not already been won, because we know by the word of God that this battle has already been won, and that Jesus Christ is the victory. He's gotten us the victory over the flesh, the devil, and the world. So therefore, there's no weapon formed against us that will prosper, because God is able to do what he said. But we have to be still. We have to believe that God has already done this work and that it's coming to us. It's being performed. That word that you believe, that word that you spoke, that thing that you're waiting for, all the anxiety of darkness is going to come at you. It's going to try to present itself in your members. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Yeah, I, I want to share with you that, you know, most of what I'm talking to you about is intimacy with God because we don't have understanding of what's going on in our life without intimacy with God when you sit down with the Word of God it's not about going to Bible study it's not about get you know I've got to get this done because I've got to teach a class or whatever we sit down with him because we love him and we want to know him it's a part of our our life our devotion before God to bow our heads before Him and know nothing but Him. Yet we come with our situations and our circumstances, but we are well aware that He knows that situation and that circumstance. And that the fact is, is that He want, he, he already knew all about it 
way before you were born. Every pathway that can be that that is known to man for us to take is not a new thing. It's an old thing. And God sees it. Well, why doesn't he prevent it? Because this is about faith. It's about us standing on the word of God and confessing the word of God and knowing that he will perform that thing which concerns you. He wants salvation for you and he wants salvation for your family. He wants salvation for your neighbors and your and whomever will hear his voice. He wants salvation. But that salvation is going to come through you by Christ Jesus, of course. Jesus died so that we could be reconcilers. When he died and gave us life, we became reconcilers. Just as he reconciled us to God, we reconciled. We, we, we are that image of him in the earth that presents the picture of, of the peace and the love and the mercy. You know, that long suffering with joyfulness that we do is, is, not, just, is not just to keep you all right, though it's awesome. <laughs> it is that other people will see that steadiness of yours and wonder, who you're anchored to <laughs> you know and we know that we're anchored to the rock we're an rock we're anchored to, to Jesus Christ who gave himself for us we live through him his strength is in us that's why we sit down and we meditate on the Word of God and we wait we we, we hear let me say med when I say we meditate on the Word of God I mean we are dependent on the Spirit of God who gives us understanding. He makes wise the simple, but we know, see, we can't... As I was reading the Word today, I was thinking about how we read the Word, and it says to do this, and we try to go out and perform the, that that the Word says to do in our own strength. But I am reminded that it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. Yes, He brings down the mountains. He breaks down the strongholds. He enlightens the darkness. You know, He enlightens the darkness. He brings light to that dark place so that you're able to stand, you're able to sit, you're able to walk. You're able to do greater things because you're listening for the sound of his voice when you're reading the word you're 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 waiting on him you're you're dependent on him to give you light but I, I told him this morning that the entrance of your word gives me light I'm dependent upon you I can't understand this word that you've given me you know the entrance of your word brings light and God honors his word He'll show you what you need to eat today so that I'm talking about spiritual food because if we delight ourselves in this Word of God it will bring strength to our soul he'll give us understanding he'll give us ideals he'll give us witty inventions he'll he'll give us whatever we need when we when we come to the word of truth and we are dependent on him to open it up for us we don't come to the Word, sit down, and just assume that it's open. We know that we have to be careful of how we hear things. We have to hear by the Spirit of God. This is the Spirit that has spoken in, since the beginning in Genesis. He's, he's moved upon the waters, and the water is the Word of God. The, the, the Spirit of God was hovering. He was over the water. Yeah, maybe a physical water, but we don't know. All I know is that when God spoke, the Spirit of God went into action. And when the, when every time God speaks, He speaks Jesus. Jesus is coming out of His mouth. God is salvation. I am your creator. I created the world and all that there is in it. And we become, it's, it's like we become a part of him when we hear I mean we are already a part of him we are God's children we've been created in his image by Christ Jesus but the Spirit of God is the one 
keeping our hearts and minds until the time of Jesus Christ, until he comes back through those clouds. He is keeping us by his spirit. This is the inheritance that we have inherited, a comforter, a counselor, one who's with us and never leaves us, never forsakes us. He's not gone. Even when it's dark, he is that that source of life that keeps speaking to us. Come, I am here. I am with you. Yeah, okay. Calm down, calm down, right? We've got to get through those, these life situations and circumstances that are clouding our mind and keeping us from entering into the kingdom of God keeping us from hearing by the spirit of truth we're so in, we're embittered and enraged by our situation and circumstances we're fearful and afraid I was reading over here real briefly in um, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 I think it is it says get rid of all bitterness rage anger harsh words slander as well as all types of evil behavior instead be kind to each other tender-hearted forgiving one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you well is it so easy to do that is it easy to do that because that's the question we have here because as soon as we're done with our prayer room experience we're gonna walk out there into the real world <laughs> it, it, yes we're we're sitting right now listening and, and eating and drinking this is real we're gonna come face to face with flesh and blood but we know, by the remembrance of the word, that flesh and blood do not inherit the kingdom of God. We know, by the word of God and by the remembrance of the word, that, that, that we don't fight with flesh and blood. We, hmm, when we sit with the living God, when we sit with God, dependent upon him to tell us and show us all things, he gives us wisdom and knowledge. He gives us spiritual strength so that we're able to not fight with our brothers and sisters, not contend with them or see people after the flesh. I hope I can say this right. Because there's a way of seeing everyone that we encounter. And we no longer see anyone after what they do and what they say and what, the, you know, we don't see them after because we can do some foolish things that throw each other off and therefore we see no man after the flesh because when i see them by the spirit i can help them with what god gave me on the inside that kindness and that love that tender heartedness comes from spending time with the lord and when i do that when i encounter any situation the grace of God is doing what grace does and I'm because of my love for him his love is, is shed abroad in my heart towards people because we understand that again there are two invisible kingdoms and the kingdom of darkness is preying upon the souls of mankind all he wants to do is his, 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 his job is to kill, steal, and destroy. But when we sit and get anchored in God, in the Word of God, when we're settled and, and anchored to the rock, Jesus Christ, when I say that, I mean knowing Him. It, I'm, again, I come back to intimacy. Intimacy with God makes you not want to leave Him alone. You don't want to leave aside. You, you, you learn the walls of your salvation. You learn that salvation has walls and you don't want to go outside of them. This love of God, I mean, it is the strength and the source of your life. No matter what someone else is doing, it's not going to distract you from God Almighty, from Jesus Christ and, by, and from the Spirit of God. You want El Shaddai. You want Him. You want the God of your salvation, and you do not want to leave him. And nobody, in, in the Bible says, nobody can pluck you out of his hand. Nobody. 
And I don't know what we face today. All I know is that we're... See, we can't root and ground ourselves in God. We are heirs and joint heirs together with God and with Christ Jesus. But it's because we follow the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. We have... We have understood, we know Romans chapter 7, where he says, Oh, wretched man that I am, I've wrestled with my mind, I've wrestled with my flesh, I've wrestled, I've wrestled, I've wrestled, and I come to find out, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? And we understand, I mean, everything breaks right there, it's like an egg breaking. Jesus Christ the son of the living God. He's he's broken the curse of the law. He's broken, the he's shattered it so that we can all enter in. We can all enter in through him who gave himself for us. His blood and his, his word, his name is, is on my forehead. I can do all things now through Christ who's my strength. But our eyes must continually be on Him. He is our source. He is our focus. He is the lover of our soul. And if we don't love God, if we don't fall in love with Him, how can we do these things? How can we not be bitter? How can we not be enraged? How can we not be angry or have harsh words and slander for one another? I mean, it's easy to take our eyes off of Christ when we are in the flesh. But those who are led by the Spirit overcome the flesh. We overcome the devil. See, God's spiritual. God is spirit, and those that worship and worship Him in spirit and in truth, the Spirit of God shows us the invisible things. He brings, when, when you're reading the Word, He's bringing you light. He's giving you understanding. He's bringing you revelation. And then when we walk out there and we're faced with the world and everything that, that goes on in our lives, in your life today, you can see the spiritual. He opens your mind. He opens your heart, your eyes, your ears. And you are hearing with your spiritual ears and seeing with your spiritual eyes. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. You can read it again in um, what was it? Isaiah chapter 11. What the Spirit of God is bringing to us. This is what Jesus Christ was given. You know, not to see any more after the flesh, but by the Spirit of God, who lives in us to bring us to that day, the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I mean, read Isaiah chapter 11, and you can read the whole thing, read chapter 11 and, and chapter 12. But understand what the Spirit of God has given us. And I can say that because I know, we know that, what was it now? The Spirit of God. No, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. This is our inheritance. We have inherited the right to see. We have inherited the right to hear. We have inherited inherited from God by Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God, who dwells in our hearts. Ephesians, oh, where were you? Um, in Ephesians chapter 2? Oh yeah, here we go. Ephesians chapter 2 out of the, uh, what Bible is this? NLT. Um, now it was Ephesians chapter 2, verse 17. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him, and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit 
because Christ, because of what Christ has done for us. Now go back up to verse 16. It says, Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross and our hostility toward each other was put to death. Listen, no, it was 13. I'm sorry. But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. Through the blood of Christ. Now I come back down to 18. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. Now verse 19. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers or foreigners. You are citizens along with God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, through through though or through him you gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where god lives by his spirit where god lives by his spirit i want to make an emphasis on verse 22 god lives in us by his spirit all through the bible it speaks about how we hear it speaks about how we hear and how they didn't listen or hearken to the voice of the Lord because you know we used to read in the King James but it, it always speaks about that and anytime that they went ahead and had war or did something ahead of God without first you know say, saying okay God what do you think <laughs> what, what should we do here they had always went bad but when they inquired of the Lord oh wasn't life good they had some bloody battles back here, and we still have bloody battles today. You know, and, and we always inquire of the Spirit of God because He sees things ahead and before and behind. He He sideways, He He knows everything. There's not a plan that's not just the dark just can't hide anything. God sees what's in the darkness. What darkness means to you and I is something unknown. But with God, all things are known. So we can trust Him. Now, praise the Lord. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I get the word in your face international. We can trust Him. He's a faithful God who, who delivers His people when we hear Him. I pray that you understand, you, 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 that you get it, you know. Sit down with Him and take time to learn His voice. Don't assume that we can do this work ourselves. You can't unbitter yourself, even though it says don't be bitter and don't be enraged. When we see things after the outward appearance, after the flesh, we get bitter. We don't know what to do. We get enraged. We want to fight. We want to yell. We want to cuss. We want to cheat, rob, and steal. We want to do everything that the flesh would do because the flesh is dependent it, it, it's dependent on the world it's dependent on what the dirt the ground that has been born out of i want to say it was born into sin and it doesn't need any instruction on how to do that it'll just do it but we have given our lives to christ we've said yes to jesus christ we know that God is and that he's a rewarder of those who come after them, him. And he rewards us with wisdom and knowledge. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so tempted to run to Isaiah chapter 11 because that's where the Spirit of God is, is giving us information. You know, he's giving us eyesight, earsight. Earsight, okay. It says here in verse 2, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom, the, and the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of counsel, the Spirit of might, the Spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. 
and he shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. That's, you know, we have inherited this through Christ Jesus. Now, I, I've got a picture of it. I, I, I can see it. You know, it, you sit down with the Lord. He reveals all truth to you. You are an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Jesus says in Romans chapter 8. And this is what God has given us. His spirit. Read that in Ephesians chapters 1 and Colossians. Read it. Eat the word of truth. Have intimacy with God. True intimacy. I mean, love is not sex, people. I mean... Sex, if you, if you think about sex, God created it. God created it. Why did he create that? I mean, he gave us intimacy. If I could take those two and put them together is so that we could understand the intimacy that we have in that type of encounter. When done the right way, I mean, husband and wife, <laughs> when this type of intimacy is an opening, a trusting of one another. There's a trust there. There's a, there's an ah there. An opening in the heart for one another. And this is what we do with God. We open our heart to Him so He can sit in His place. Our heart is His place. We belong to God and we allow Him to come and sit in the throne room of our heart. That's where the kingdom of God in you is. I, I, I can't. I wish I could explain it better to you. I just know that God, he, he is with us and He'll never leave us. That He loves what He has created. And, and again, read uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and through, through however long He'll have you read it, whatever. But read Ephesians and see how he has done this thing for us. See how he has called us to himself and how he has made us his own. Yeah. We have his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works on purpose. Do we take these good works like, like, he, like the Lord just told us? You know, in the Bible, it talks about a guy who went down, who, who was told to go wash in, a, in, in a certain water, and he was like, "Well, why not go to this one? Why not go to that one?" He had leprosy. Why not go to this one? Or why not go to that one? And the servant said, "You know, come on, man, just go do it." You know, I can't remember. I'm just paraphrasing my own words here. And he went ahead and he did it. And he dipped seven times, I believe it was, and he came up clean. Well, we treated those good things that God would have us do something like how he did before he actually went and dipped seven times. God, in that good thing that doesn't seem like much to you, will take that thing and make it much more than you could ever think, ask, or imagine. He, he will make it more than you could comprehend. Because that's how he works. Because everything that we do, that, that, is, that he has told us to do, that we would humble ourselves and do, I'm talking about the good thing, will bring him glory. See, no flesh will glory, but he will get the glory because you'll know that it's him and you, out of your mouth, will give him praise and and then it ends up a praise before many because you just know in awe of the very nature of him to do this thing you know when we find out how much we belong to him and he is ours oh <laughs> how great is our god is all that you can say and it's all you want to display 
It's like dancing and, and, and singing and leaping and jumping and this <laughs> in awe of him. Oh, I can't explain it the way I want to. But read uh, Ephesians and read Colossians and then read Isaiah chapter 11, that, that portion that I read to you because... It, it speaks about what the Spirit of God is doing in us. Especially of giving us a quick understanding. We've received from Christ this inheritance. Amen. In verse 4 it said, But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity the meek of the earth, and she, he shall smite the ground smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with his breath his lips shall slay the wicked and the righteousness sh and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins and this lives in us in our words the words that we say won't be words that fall on the ground the, those words that that the father speaks will be coming out of our mouth this is the inheritance we have by the Spirit of God by Christ Jesus will be speaking the mind and the will of God in the earth and the enemy will be defeated I mean like I said in the beginning he is defeated but God wants us to say what he is saying and the only way to do that one is intimacy with God Two. I'll say it again. When you're intimate with him, you can't help but say what he says. You become identical. It's like a husband and wife. They're with each other long enough, and they get to know each other long enough that they become identical. You know? She knows what he'll say before he says it, because she's been with him so long. And he knows her thoughts as well. He knows, knows the way that she is. Especially when they love one another. And they haven't been broken and separated by bitterness and wrath and all this other junk because of the two different personality types and oh my goodness the things that can come in and destroy a marriage but if one will stay yoked to Jesus Christ if one of you will just submit yourself to God and trust him so that your mouth can be closed when it needs to be closed and open when it needs to be open so that you can uh, you know because the word, the God will work all things out together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. And if that means salvation in your household for unruly spouses and children and all that stuff, you just keep intimacy with God. Keep, keep yourself humble before God. And humble doesn't mean shut up over there in a corner somewhere with your Bible in fear. <laughs> You know, procrastinating and, and being bitter and angry and argh, get away from me, I'm reading my Bible. <laughs> Open your heart to him today. Let him come down and sit with you. Your heart is his throne room. Be intimate with God because he wants to be intimate with you so that he can produce what he wrote in the heavens for you in the earth by your mouth because he's going to use your mouth to say it he's going to use what you do what what comes out of your mouth and what your actions are to his word faith without works is dead you are absolutely right but works do not come before faith somebody has to have the faith in order to get the work started Jesus had faith and the works came because when he spoke devils came out he didn't even have to speak first sometimes he, he was just present and they would fall on the ground before him don't torment us you know and he spoke his word he said what he said and they had to leave <laughs> But he had faith in God, faith our Father, faith in his Father, faith in who he knew God said he was because he, he, they couldn't be separated. 
God the Father and the Son and the Spirit, they are one. And that one, that one lives in us. So submit yourself to God today. And he'll give you what you need to be able to resist the devil. But you can't do it on your own. You can't do it just because the word told you to do it. You've got to be intimate with God. We'll praise you. Praise his name. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I pray to come back to that subject again because it's what I live with. You know, that's how we live. If anything was taken from me in my lifetime, it's something called intimacy. You know, at some point he'll have you stand back and, and reevaluate your life, and that's where you'll know your ministry is. That's where you'll know that's what that is. Okay, that's what I got to work on. But, you know, he showed me that through my childhood, what was taken away from me and what I desire most is intimacy with God with the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit everybody else in this world will be unfaithful to you but God will never be unfaithful God is always always faithful but that's another reason why we have to not look at people after the flesh but by the Spirit of God so then I can say that everything that I've walked through because God knew it and he allowed it I'm good. I'm not hurt. I'm good. I, I mean, I am like in awe of him because that's all you want. Praise him. Praise, praise his name. <laughs> all praise his name. This is Get the Word in Your Face International with Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I have, Cheryl, have a great, great day. Don't forget to eat his word. Don't forget to to just meditate on him. I, I buy some of the products. Get the proper faces, I'm telling you. If you just take a nibble of this word every day, every day, put it in a place where you walk by and just don't forget. It's like don't forget to take your vitamins. These are the vitamins that bring you inner strength. You know, and it's all scripture products. It's not my idea products. They're all scripture products on these pages. And and give yourself the true fast. A fast to the word of God so that it's storing up in your heart. And as it stores up in your heart, it comes out of your mouth. And as it goes out of your mouth, it goes into the heavens. And it builds up in the heavens. And it builds up in the heavens. And it builds up until that rain starts pouring down into this world where we need it so that we can do the will of God that much more better in Jesus name in Jesus name you now it's almost like a prayer you know when I say it it's almost like a prayer it's like you know, just get the word in your face and get it stored up in your heart so you can break up all this foul ground of our hearts around us when Jesus when, when the father said I'm going to give you a new spirit I'm going to put my spirit within you and I'm going to give you a new heart and a new mind in Ezekiel, right? Chapter 36. He's, he's saying, I'm going to break up the, the corrupt heart, that heart, and I'm going to give you my heart. That meant you're going to sit down just like now and get the word in your face. You're going to be intimate with me and I'm going to take all of that hardness out of you and I'm going to give you my heart. This is Jesus Christ coming with spirit, by spirit. He, Jesus Christ comes by spirit and with fire. That's what it said. He's going to baptize us with spirit and with fire. I know there's other renditions people have said in another way, and that's all right. But I want to come to this and say that you are on the threshing floor of God, of Jesus Christ's Son, and he's threshing you and taking off the chaff, and he's burning it with fire. And he wants us to begin to let go of every issue of life because his love overcomes all sin. His love overcomes all of this junk, all of the lies of the enemy. And he gives us a clear mind, a sound mind, and sets our feet on the right path, the path of light, the path of salvation. It's narrow. 
and as it's, it's as it's as it's narrow that's okay that it's narrow because we all want to enter into the kingdom of God we all want to see Jesus when he comes and be raised from the dead we want to be raised into the new life that God has made for his children for those who love him and to love God means to let go of this world and as hard as it may feel and as shaking as it may feel and the unknown about it is like okay I can't see but what are we doing here God is transforming your heart and mind he's taking out the junk hey I'm going again but you know it's just getting rid of all the junk God knows how to do it we can't get rid of this junk on our own we need the Spirit of God who reminds us of the reality, the true truth of life, the conception of it. He knows how to take out the bitterness. He knows how to take out the rage. He knows how to take out the anger and the harsh words. He knows how to take slander out of you so that we can walk in love by His grace, by His Spirit, by His grace the grace that he has given us through Jesus Christ his son because grace and truth come by him let's fall in love today get the word in your face bye bye